What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. Today I want to share with you an interesting observation I made when writing some dynamic SQL regarding the execution order of expressions inside a select statement. So the dynamic SQL query I was trying to write was going to take this piece of JSON, right? It's a double nested array. Uh, and transform it into rows and columns of data. So taking the first nested array and turning that into row one, uh, and then taking the second nested array and turning it into row two. The catch here though was that instead of just returning this as a normal result set, I wanted to build this into a query so that each row was its own select statement with union alls uh, joining them together. So my first crack at it looked something like this. In this query, we're using the open JSON function to parse open that uh, double nested array. And if we basically, if we run that, right, just to show you, we get our two rows with our nested arrays on each row. Uh, pretty good. So what I do then is a cross apply in order to get the uh, remaining, you know, values out of that array parsed. And this is kind of the result set that we're going to be able to work with uh, to accomplish what I want, the multiple select statements that are union all together. And so my first step at writing this dynamic SQL involved me creating this row query variable, which is gonna hold the query text uh, that I'm building dynamically, right? We're using a, kind of a typical pattern of coalescing the data that I'm interested in to be able to build my select statements that are union all together, right? And then we just have the rest of the query remains the same as it was. So if I actually go and do this, we'll select it, and then we'll go ahead and execute. If we look at the output of this dynamic SQL query, we can see that it's a pretty good start. We have each of our array values parsed out with appropriately named aliases, right? So row zero, column zero indicates the first cell. And then we move across, right? Continuing with row zeros, but column one and column two. And then when we get to D, which was our second uh, nested array in our original JSON data, right? We switch to row one. So normally when I'm writing this kind of query where I'm taking string data, or in this case JSON data, and trying to parse it out into a more traditional tabular result set, uh, you know, I may use open JSON to get all my values kind of in a column format, and then I'll use the dynamic SQL to write a pivot statement. Um, and dynamically creating all the columns of my pivot, right, to then transform that into a real result set. However, because of other requirements that I had for this particular query, uh, I decided I, I, was, I needed to do it using the kind of select union all syntax. And so uh, where I'm at right now with my query works pretty well, uh, all I need to do is add a union all select in between uh, my two rows of data to get the final output I want. And the way I decided to do that, well, that's what led me to make this video to Today about the kind of interesting observation that I saw about SQL Server select statement. So if we scroll down to kind of my what my final query looks like, you'll see I added a current row variable, which I uh, initialized to zero. Uh, my row query statement is basically the same, uh, with the main difference of I'm creating this if uh, function here to determine when to append my union all. Um, so just to give you an idea, let me run this and then we'll explain it afterwards, right? So if we run this query, we take a look at, you know, what it produces, we'll see we have our two select statements unioned all together. It's giving me that exact output that I'm looking for. The, the interesting thing here though is, right, I'm, I'm using this current row variable and after every time the row query variable gets set, right, for each row in my result set, that current row indicator is potentially increasing, right, it's potentially setting current row equal to the current row number if the current row number is greater than my current row variable. So basically, if I'm going on to a new row in my JSON data array, uh, I want to increment that current row variable. And so what I thought was interesting was that this logic only works because SQL Server is executing the expressions in my select clause in a kind of serial order. If SQL Server decided to execute all my expressions in parallel or maybe in a random order, this type of logic where I'm incrementing my row counter uh, as the last expression uh, wouldn't be consistent and it wouldn't work for my data. And this was something I took for granted initially, right? When I was writing this query, I wasn't really thinking about it. I was, I was kind of thinking in loop you know, mode like, a, like the developer hat that I normally wear thinks about this stuff. Uh, but it's great that SQL Server kind of maintains an order of execution on these select expressions because otherwise this pattern wouldn't work. 
So while I'm still not entirely certain that there's absolutely no way for SQL Server to change the order, right, that it decides to execute these select expressions, uh, I couldn't find an example to disprove that it does it sequentially. So for all the testing that I did, this seemed to work pretty well for my scenario, so I went with it. But if you know of any way, right, that SQL Server executes select expressions in a different order. If you have ideas about it, be sure to comment below. I'd be curious to hear your suggestions. So thanks for tuning in. If you're not already a subscriber, please press that subscribe button so you never miss one of my weekly episodes and I'll see you next time. Thanks.